Will you damage your Harley engine if you modify it in any way? Catch you inside. Revelator Elf. Hello, welcome to Revelator Elf. Hope you're enjoying the channel and the series of videos. Please like, share, subscribe, leave loads of comments below and check out the website revelatoralf.com and also the links in the description below. So uh, a question came in uh, over one of the videos a while back and it was to do with the reliability of modified engines. If you start to upstage your engines, if you start to change uh, cams, for example, uh, are you actually affecting the reliability of the engine? So if we speak specifically about Harley-Davidson engines, uh, the Milwaukee 8, or you could apply this to any engine as well. Are we actually uh, destroying the integrity uh, of that engine by adding different components on there or trying to get more performance out of it? There are two points here we've got to consider. First of all, who is doing the, the work uh, on the engine and also what components are being used. That's the most critical thing. So let's just say uh, the difference between somebody who's qualified or who is knowledgeable and somebody who isn't really, they don't really know what they're doing. They're just trying to do the best that they can. Historically, the unreliability of any engine or any Harley engines, uh, for example, after any modification has mostly been because of, let's say, of home mechanics uh, uh, have uh, tinkered with their bikes and they haven't actually done it right, uh, for want of a better word. Uh, or they've used, used components or practices that weren't really in keeping with the engine uh, type. Now, let's say, for example, uh, a Harley Tech uh, has uh, been doing the work, or any mechanic, or if you yourself, if you're really qualified, knowledgeable, you followed the service manual, you know exactly what you're doing, then really, unless you're the, is a component issue or a failure issue, there shouldn't really be a problem. So it's an installation aspect, or whether it's a component aspect. So let's just talk about the components now. If you're using approved components, then there will be uh, a certain amount of testing on those components, and they will allow for a certain amount of reliability. But let's be honest with ourselves. Any time that you're going to modify an engine or upstage an engine, essentially you want greater performance out of that engine. So you're going to be demanding a lot more for it. So if you have a performance envelope, let's say, uh, this is my uh, visual here, uh, and the standard Harley engine operates within a small part, uh, a central location of that big wide envelope. As soon as you start to upstage it and modify it, you're increasing the performance requirement from that engine. Therefore, you're pushing it closer and closer to the envelope. It stands to reason at some point, you're actually going to start impinging on that envelope and you're going to start questioning uh, its reliability or its ability to withstand the performance requirement or the performance demand out of it. Also, what we've got to uh, understand is anytime you're modifying an engine or upstaging, you're likely to be riding it harder as well. That means greater heat, greater wear, uh, greater stress on the components as well. It also depends on what modifications you've made and is that making the rest of the engine out of balance or out of sync, for want of a better word, with the new component. If there's a difference in performance grades, then that can also affect the reliability. So let's just take a racing engine, for example, whether it's on a dirt bike or whether it's on the racetrack. You're actually modifying those engines so much or their, or their prototype engines and they're only really designed to last for a few races if, if even more than one race and then they'll be broken down and everything. Now obviously for a road bike that's not going to be good enough. We want uh, longevity in its reliability. 
So anytime we start to modify a bike, a bike engine, then we're kind of acting like sports bike uh, or sports engines in many ways. We've actually modified the engine uh, to get greater performance out of it, but we are going to impact on its reliability or its longevity. Now, just because uh, we've modified an engine, uh, it doesn't necessarily follow that that engine now would become unreliable. It really depends, of course, how it's ridden. So if we're riding it to the red line, for example, at high revs all the time and uh, dramatic increases in RPM up or down, uh, that will induce lots of temperature or rapid temperature changes and that will lead to component failure a lot sooner. However, if it's ridden in a normal manner, then as long as the, the components themselves are, are approved, as long as they've been tested, as long as the installation has been correct and its maintenance or aftercare is correct, then there's no reason why that engine should not last you uh, just as long as a standard engine. However, a word of warning here. Many people would argue that actually, as soon as you start to tamper with any standard engine, you will end up being broken down on the side of the road. Why is that? Because a lot of people will say, well, it's because of all the things that I've already said. It's about poor insulation. It's about what uh, components you're putting on the bike as well. Now, if you're starting to mix and match components from different uh, manufacturers as well, that can also cause an imbalance on the engine. And what I'm talking about imbalance, I'm talking about performance imbalances. One might have a greater latitude than another part of the engine. So if you're starting to ride or demand power from your engine to match this new component with a performance quality, then it might be outstretching another part of the engine. So that's something to consider. If you watch my other video about keeping the bike in balance for engine modifications and suspension and braking, it's a similar kind of process here. As soon as you affect one aspect of that engine, you really need to look at other aspects as well. Now, when the Milwaukee 8 engines uh, first came out, there was an issue with upstaged uh, engines uh, up to stage 4, stage 3, stage 4, uh, because the oil pump just wasn't uh, beefy enough to uh, handle that. Now, this again uh, feeds into this unreliability uh, issue, if you like. As soon as uh, you're taking that engine beyond the, the parameters upon which it's been tested, then all of a sudden we're entering no man's land. Many of us at home, you know, we might uh, think that we know a lot more than the, uh, the designers, the engine designers, and we'll think, yes, we'll definitely put that on and we'll definitely do that and it will work fine. But actually, most of the time, it's a stab in the dark. We're kind of going on here, say we're going on what we think is right and what we what we think should work. But only the designers and the original builders of that engine and the manufacturers are really going to know what its uh, testing tolerance is and also what the latitude of that engine is to be modified in any way. But as soon as you start to modify an engine, you do run the risk of it becoming less reliable. All the components within that engine are not matched to other components and then there's an imbalance and a, a performance imbalance if you like and that can create issues. But as long as the components are sound, as long as the insulation practices and are sound and the aftercare is sound, there shouldn't really be a major issue. As long as the engine is still ridden or run within its original tolerance as well. If you're starting to redline an engine uh, every time you ride it, then it stands to reason at some point that engine will blow. If you're riding within the mid RPM range and you're not excessively revving it uh, and causing huge temperature deviations, uh, then the chances are your engine will last uh, a long time. Now, obviously this really depends, of course, if there isn't a fault with the engine in the first place. 
One of the issues with the M8 engine, especially the first year, 2017, 2018, there were lots of uh, reports of engine issues uh, in the Taurus, and then some some slightly uh, in the soft tails as well. Most of that was down to upstanging issues, uh, the oil pump issues. Lots of that was down to uh, first batch teething problems, let's say. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's one of those things, as soon as a new engine comes to market, you kind of really have to bide your time, wait a year or so uh, for all the niggles uh, to be uh, ironed out and uh, all the faults to uh, rise to the surface so then they can be rectified. But after that, if you're buying a 2020 or a 2019 M8 engine now, there shouldn't be any issue at all. So anyway, I hope this helps. I hope this uh, answers a few questions for you. So there are going to be reliability uh, impact on a modified engine, no doubt, but it really depends on, as I say, the installation, the aftercare, the maintenance, if you like, uh, the components used, whether they're in balance with each other and ultimately how it's ridden as well. Anyway, let me know what you uh, think in the comments below. Please like, share, subscribe. Check out the website revelatoralf.com and uh, all the links in the description below and I'll catch you on the next video. Ta-da now.